Good day and welcome to our complete explanation end to end on how to flash a Juniper switch. In particular, we're going to flash a Juniper EX3400. We're going to assume you know absolutely nothing. So uh, what we're going to do now is go get the firmware. So first thing to do is go to juniper.net and click support and sign in if you haven't already. In my case, I'm going to select the EX series. And here, uh, where even though it had EX in here, you need to type EX or just click find product right away. And this will come up and you can select, in my case, 3400 down at the bottom left there. Now JWeb is the web interface. Uh, you can download that if you wish. Uh, Junos is the core operating system. And uh, you can download that if you wish, which is what I'm going to do. And there's a third one, Junos SR. That's the secure version. You can download that if you wish. Uh, I'm going to focus on the Junos uh, primary operating system, the, the regular operating system, although Juniper is changing off to the SR. Uh, okay, let's uh, let's continue. So we have it downloaded. You copy that onto a USB stick that is formatted as FAT32 and unplug it from your PC, but do not plug it into the Juniper box yet. The next thing we need to do is connect a console cable. Console cable in my case is exactly this one. I'm working on a computer that's new enough that it doesn't have a serial port, so I need to use this USB serial port to RJ45. However, there are alternatives. You could use something like this, just a little adapter, plug in your USB there, whatever makes you happy. What you need to do is make sure that your PC or laptop is connected to the Juniper box via the console cable. When you plug in that console cable, you're going to get an additional port. The next thing we need to do is get a little utility called PuTTY. So just type in PuTTY and you should find PuTTY.org first. Now there is an installer for PuTTY, I'm just going to click get here, but you don't need it. You don't need the MSI, you can just get the standalone. So click here and download PuTTY.exe. After it's downloaded, you'll have it here, well wherever you've got it. And what you want to do is launch it and go to uh, Serial, select Serial. Now the question is, what COM port do you need to use? Well, when you plugged in your console cable, if you went into Device Manager, you would see that a COM port was added. That's the one you need to use. So again, go into Device Manager, expand ports, and see what the newest one is. In my case, it's COM5. All right, so I have it set to COM5 on Serial, and click Open. Nothing much will happen, press Enter a few times. To maximize this, because you don't need your PC anymore, click the icon in the top left-hand corner if you want to make it a little easier to read, which I do. Change settings, click appearance, and I'm going to change the font so that you can see it even easier. There we go. And sign in as root, whatever that is for you. There we go. Now what we need to do is figure out what that USB stick is going to be called when we plug it into the unit, because right now it is not plugged into our Juniper box. And the way to do that is to simply take a listing twice, once before, once after. So it's ls slash dev slash d a asterisk. There it is. Now take your USB stick and plug it in. Wait a minute, and you'll see it mounted. Well, it didn't mount. You'll see that it connected. Press enter, run the same command again, and you'll notice that there's now an additional unit here, an additional device here. All right, these ones are the same. This is the one that's different. That's the new one. So uh, what we have to do now is mount that. And the question is, well, where do we mount it? Well, not very challenging. Uh, you need to mount it into, well, we're going to mount it into a temporary folder. And what we'll want to do is make that temporary folder. So that's simply make dir var temp USB. You could call it really anything you want, but that's what I'm going to call it. Now, I'm going to get an error because it already exists in my case. There it is. But in your case, it'll just run through. Now, what we need to do is mount that device into that folder. So, in my case, you can read it's mount msdosfs, better known as FAT32, 
the device is that DA1S1 and we want to put it into that USB folder. Bingo! Now what we need to do is copy the TGZ firmware off of it into the temp folder. So let's do that. So there's the command and just press enter. And this is going to take a second. So just wait. I'd like to interject for just 10 seconds and ask you to click like if you found this video useful. Our site is dedicated to explaining technology in simple ways and providing cookbook answers for technical problems. We spend a lot of time on Windows 10 and Windows Server. We spend a lot of time on Azure, Office 365, but mostly our products are about how-tos. Lots and lots of cookbooks like how to uninstall something when it's stuck. If you would click subscribe, we would greatly appreciate it. It really helps us with the Google algorithm. Thanks for your help and back to the show. Bingo. So that took in my case about, oh, 30, 40 seconds, maybe, well, maybe as long as a minute. Sorry, I had a little bump there. So what we want to do is find out what the exact name of that file is, and that's easy to do. That file being the firmware, so taking an ls of it. So ls slash var slash temp slash jun star. That's the name of the file. That is the firmware file. And the command we need to run is in the CLI, which is the command line interface. So type CLI. And what we need to do, and you'll notice that the uh, prompt changes from the percent sign here to the greater than sign. And the command that we need to type is request. Now this has tab complete, so you can type a little bit and then press tab. System, software, add, and then we want to take this whole path. So the easiest way to do that is to highlight it and right click on it. It puts it in for us and then type reboot. We'll have that command in our documentation on our webpage at www.urtech.ca. So this is going to take a few minutes. So we're going to speed through it for you so you don't have to wait. Now here's an interesting error. If you run out of space, you need to clear up some junk. So let's do that. I'm going to get out of the CLI, just type exit. So you can go through and dump anything in here that is garbage, or you can simply run request system storage cleanup. Sorry, that has to be done in the CLI, so let's do it again. So yes. To avoid that uh, enormous list, and just if you just want to dump everything that's garbage, it's request system storage cleanup no confirm. Now let's see if our file is still there, our flash. Nope, it's gone, so we get to do that again. Okay, we'll do this very quickly. Okay, so I've done some playing around here. We need to unmount that uh, USB stick. Done. Now we can disconnect the USB stick. And we can copy that zip file on there again, back on our PC. Again, if you've got the space, you're already done. But if you don't, well, that's a problem. So I'm going to take my file again, copy it onto my USB stick. All right, so now I'm going to take the USB stick out of my PC. And let's go back to our Juniper. To clear this up, I'm just going to type in clear, which clears the screen so I can start again. I'm going to type ls slash dev da. There we go. Now I'll plug the stick in to my Juniper box again. There we go. Wait for it to come up, press enter, and then run the same command again. And isn't that nice that this actually is the same place this time, which is great. Okay, now I need to remount it. Bingo. Now I need to copy it. Now I want to get the name of it again, so it's ls var temp last June, that's enough. There it is. And then the command is request system software add, path to the file, name of the file with reboot. Let's see if we've got enough space this time. Oh, got to go into the CLI, right. Let's type CLI, run the same command again, and hopefully we have enough space this time. And if not, you get a really big hammer and just start smashing the heck out of the machine. You didn't need that switch anyway. What's $5,000 between friends? We'll speed this up so you don't have to sit here and wait. Okay, if you have an EX2300 or an EX3400,
turns out you're just not going to have enough space regardless. So what you have to do is follow this lovely K-Base article, which is KB31198. And it boils down to there just isn't going to be enough space on this. I've talked to Juniper support, JTAC, and they tell me, yeah, it's now a known issue on uh, certainly the firmware I'm running in newer and uh, doing the system cleanup just isn't enough. So what you got to do is run through this thing. What I've done already to make this faster is I've already downloaded both of these two packages. And what these two packages do apparently is uh, manage the upgrade for you. So they move files around to make space, which is obnoxious as hell, but that's just what it is. So you have to download these files, put them onto your USB stick, then what you need to do is go back to your putty. There, I just plug the USB stick in and see what device it is. It's still the same one, thank God. You need to mount it again. There we go. And we need to copy those files, so that's copy, var, temp, USB, OS, star, to, var, temp. Bingo. We can do the same thing, but this time we need to run the package hook. So a package, that's probably enough. There it is. Now let's just take a quick look. LS. TMP. Boy, this is a pain, huh? Let's go to OS. Oops. Slash OS. Yeah, it's there. And pack. There it is. And of course, we want to make sure our original Juno's file is still there. And it is. Okay, so those are the three files we need. Then we go back to our KBase article and we copy the command, which I will have at urtech.ca because this is one convoluted freaking process. Oh, go into the CLI. Sorry about that. There we go. Let that run. And then do the same thing with the package hooks. Let that run. Now we get to run the upgrade again, but this time with these new switches. Isn't that nice? So we're going to here and paste, except that's not the upgrade I want to run. I need to run, my file name is that. And let's see if it works this time, boys and girls. Or if we're going to get a great big hammer and deal with it that way. Oh my god, it's working. Praise be! Okay, so we're going to let this run. And let's see how it goes. Alright, so it's done its update. Now let's just take a look here at show version. And we're going to see that it's still on the old one. Yeah, see, it's uh, still running 18.1 and pending is 21.1. So now what we have to do is request system reboot. Whoops, <laughs> wrong command. I thought I had a different command in my clipboard. There it is. Yep. Okay, we'll skip this so you don't have to get bored. You'll note everything here says Juniper 21R1. All right, so let's sign in. As root, of course. And let's go into the CLI. And from memory, it's show version. There we go. Now we're running Mr. Happy. If you found this video useful, we'd really appreciate it if you would click like. This really helps with the Google algorithm. Subscribe is also greatly appreciated. But if you have any questions or concerns, just put them in the comments section. We'll get back to you usually within a day or so. Beyond that, you can also always get a hold of us at www.urtech.ca. That's U-R-T-E-C-H. That's about that. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.